Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, as more people join in, I'll go ahead and let them in as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go over the basics. Uh, most of you are, are already aware of Clover's website. Clover has a website, clover.com. This is where you log in and make changes to your Clover inventory, learn about Clover, buy Clover, uh, and just watch videos about Clover, get educated about Clover. And then uh, from there, there's something called the app market, which Clover has. Uh, app market, as you guys all are well aware, it allows you to uh, add additional features to your Clover POS. Um, so you get the resources here, it has videos, webinars. Uh, and this is something we're also doing to webinars. To, we're going to do it in correlation uh, to kind of um, give updates on our apps, how it connects to Clover POS. Uh, so again, make sure to also visit Clover's website too, um, because when you visit Clover's website, uh, you also get to get some more valuable uh, resources on how everything comes together. Um, so anyhow, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to um, show you the app market first. So most of you are, are familiar with the app market. Clover has an app market, um, which as you can see here, um, it's called More Tools. It used to be called App Market, and then they changed the name to More Tools because the name was uh, taken by Apple, I believe. So in the App Market, you have lots of apps. And the app I'm going to be talking about is called Smart Online Order. Okay, Smart Online Order, it allows your Clover POS to connect to the online order. And let me show you what the online order looks like here. So again, there's many different variations of the online order because each business owner uh, can customize their menu and add pictures and use different interfaces. Please so this is. Everybody came in. <laughs> can I have you guys mute yourselves, please? Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, let me see who's not muted. Let me see. Ask to mute. Okay. Uh, please uh, mute yourselves. If you have questions, just raise your hands, or you can ask it if you if you want as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just talk about uh, how the, the basics work of the online order and then, and then show you the back end. So this merchant here, uh, as you can see, uh, he has several locations. And when I click on pickup orders, I can choose his location. When I choose his location, it'll take me to his uh, order online page, which uh, looks uh, something like this along the lines of this. And uh, from here, um, the online menu corresponds with the Clover menu. And let me show you the Clover menu, okay? So the Clover menu is this here. See, if you go to clover.com, you log into the back end, you'll see their menu, which is going to be identical to this menu here, right? It's the same thing. The main difference is that you can hide this menu. Uh, some of you are still uh, not on mute. If you can mute yourselves, that'd be great, because I can hear you talking. Let's see. Um, who, who is not mute here? Uh, let me see here. Okay. But anyhow, if you want to ask questions, uh, I'll, I'll give you that option uh, coming very soon. Uh, you can also raise your hands or, or do in the chat because we have people on our team that are monitoring, monitoring the chat and they can answer your questions too. So, um, yeah, this workshop is going to go over the Clover inventory, uh, online orders, how it prints, troubleshooting, syncing, and all that stuff, okay? But I'm going to start with the basics. Uh, it, some of you may already know this, but it's good to get reminded because even me, when I come log into the back end, things look different, things have changed. So it's always good to kind of refresh our memory, refresh what we have learned in the past. So as you can see, the item for Angel Hair Pasta uh, has the item name, the price, whether it's a fixed price or variable or per unit. Per unit's basically, you know, um, by the weight. So most uh, inventory items are fixed price. And uh, I guess you can also give it a color here, which is something new that Clover added. Um, so you can color code your item names. And if you look down here, uh, it says show online. So remember, try to ignore this part because this is a different online order app. It's something that Clover um, has their own, but but the one I'm talking about is Smart Online Order, which has additional features uh, that this one does not have. And I'm gonna talk about all of those features, okay? So Clover has items, categories, modifier groups, and you have printer labels, which is very important because if you want a specific item to go to a specific printer, then you'll have to set that up, right? Like hot printer, cold printer, um, in the back, or sushi printer, you can do all that stuff from here. And then of course you have your revenue classes and the setup and other features as well. Uh, I don't wanna go in too much 
of all the features uh, because the video will be very long. So every week or every um, we'll announce webinars. You guys can join in and I'll talk about different subjects and we'll, we'll also do surveys so you guys can choose your topic of choice and we'll talk about that. Okay, I have some more people trying to join in here. Okay, awesome. I'm, I'm admitting more people here. That's great. We have 10 people on the call. Thank you for joining. So just to recap, uh, for the newest person that joined, we were talking about the Clover inventory, the printer labels, the categories, the modifier groups, and how all these things correspond with the online order page, which is this stuff here, okay? The main difference is that on the order online page is you can hide those items and you can add pictures and descriptions and you can uh, you know, kind of customize it with the colors in the back and all that stuff. And then once this order is placed, it'll print to the Clover POS and the money gets deposited to the Clover POS, which is great. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the back end. Uh, the back end, uh, as you guys can see, it looks like this. And then what you will look for is Clover orders right here on the left-hand side. And then you have a bunch of options here. You have settings, store interface, items, images, description, orders, coupons, reports. So what we'll do is we'll go down one by one. We'll start with settings. Settings is the main uh, area you want to focus the most on. Uh, these are also can be found in other areas like here, uh, like a shortcut here. But go to settings because start from here and then kind of work your way down because you have all this information to learn and to absorb. And the more you check back here uh, often, you'll see more and more information or announcements that we add. For example, our latest announcement uh, talks about our webinar, right? This webinar that you are at right now, we will introduce or announce a date for each webinar. Um, so uh, another person just joined. Thank you for joining uh, the webinar. Um, so we're, we're talking about the back end of the online order page. So right now I'm talking about the the announcement section because it's good to visit this area because we will know, we'll make announcements on new features and how things work and our branded apps and all this cool stuff we're adding to the uh, to the online ordering and also benefits you'll get from from using our products and services okay and we also have social media marketing we, we have a lot of tools that you, you guys can benefit from and if you ever want to call us or schedule a meeting the meeting links are on here and also on our website too so keep in mind that we have meeting links uh, on our website and here, which is under announcements. So import sync inventory. Uh, a lot of you may be questioning, what is this? Uh, where does inventory come from, right? What's, why does it say 22 categories? Why does it say 2020 items? Why does it say 14 modifier groups? So this information comes from uh, here, right? Categories. These, uh, if you count these, uh, you should be able to count 22 categories here. So it imports this information information to here. Uh, so you get 22 categories, 220 items. So in other words, there's 220 items in, in these 22 categories. And in, and in these 220 items has 14 modifier groups. And then those modifier groups has modifiers. Uh, so that way your customers have lots of options and makes it easy for them to navigate your menu, right? So for example, let's find something with modifiers here. So we have uh, lots of different inventory. Uh, okay, so we have this one here. This one is, again, this is a test uh, site, so it's not gonna really have the full menu on here. So I choose a flavor. Uh, let's do hazelnut, and I choose my topping, uh, chocolate. I choose the size, uh, small, and I choose the shot, um, and I choose uh, what kind of milk I want, right? So these are modifier groups. These are modifiers. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, five modifier groups, and then we have all these items. So that's what modifier groups and modifiers are. They modify the item so your customers can choose exactly what they want. And uh, some merchants have gone even to the extra length of adding a upsell here, right? So they'll say, like, would you like to add a cookie with that, right? Uh, so you guys can do that too. You can, you can upsell them too. So even though these are kind of upsells, but you can actually go a, a little bit further and add another modifier group here and just say, would you like to add a drink to this? And then you can say, then you can choose their drink. So that's what that is. And I'm going to show you how you can see that, right? So this item is called uh, C3, right? So, and the modifier group for this is uh, flavor. Let's go to flavors. Let's take a look at what flavors are. So I'm going to go in the back end. And then I'm going to go to modifiers and modifier groups, which is right here. 
and I'm gonna go to flavors. So we have hazelnut, vanilla, white chocolate. So that's where that came from, right? So, so for example, I clicked on flavors here, and then I got hazelnut, vanilla, white chocolate, right? It corresponds to this one here. So let's suppose you are you are out of hazelnut, or you do not wish to offer hazelnut, but you wish to offer it inside the store. You can just simply hide it, right? So when you hide hazelnut, your customers once you refresh the page, hazelnut will no longer appear here. It'll just be vanilla and white chocolate, right? Okay, so that's how you can hide your modifier groups. And you can do the same thing for the main modifier group. Let's suppose you decide to give everybody no flavor choice. You can hide the whole flavor choice. So in other words, they can't even see this flavor option here. They only see these options, these other four. So you can hide that. So it's very customizable. And also, let's say, uh, like like me as an example, I always like to choose size first, right? But over here, I'm choosing size one, two, third choice. So what you can do is you can actually drag up size. Let me let me enable flavors again. I just hit, hit hazelnut, okay? And I'm gonna make size the first choice because I think uh, for this type of menu, I think size should be chosen first and then flavor. Um, but it's up to you. You can do flavor first and then size, or you can do size and flavor first. So. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the page and I'm gonna buy this item called, what was it called, C3 again? Okay, so I'm gonna refresh the page. Uh, based on what I just did, it should be size first now, unless I missed something. Let's go ahead and find that category. Okay, so yeah, I believe it's this one right here. There you go, size is first now, right? So I think size, like I choose my medium and then I choose my flavor. Remember I hit hazelnut, that's why it's not here. Uh, so again, it, just to recap, I hit hazelnut. That's why you can't see it. But if I wish to unhide it, I just do that. Again, you can also reorder this too. You can have white chocolate first. Let's say you want to push white chocolate more than hazelnut. You can you can uh, unhide hazelnut and put white chocolate at the top. So customers see that one first. So right now I see um, vanilla and white chocolate. I can see hazel. I can see sorry. I can see this one first. Same thing with milk. You can put um, you can put one percent milk first. So again, it's very customizable, uh, lots of different things you can do with it. So let's go ahead and uh, I think modifiers pretty much got answered, but if there is somebody here that has more questions about the modifier groups and modifiers, um, uh, thank you, uh, I just had somebody else join in. Thank you for joining the call. Uh, what we're talking about right now is modifier groups and modifiers. And what I did was I showed, um, how to modify how to how to make these changes here and where these changes come from so if you guys have any questions so far about the modifier groups uh, please raise your hand or just ask ask away uh, if not i'll move on to the next uh, section okay i see there's no question so i'm going to go ahead and move to the next section the next the next uh, section will be categories and items uh, I, i'm not going in a i'm not going in any particular order i'm just kind of like showing around the back end here so modifier groups and modifiers and categories and items, if you could think about it, it's almost the same. Under a category is an item, under a modifier group is a modifier. So here's, we have all our categories, right? The nice thing about this backend is you can add pictures to your categories, right? So cold drinks, as you can see, there's no pictures here, right? Cold drinks is right here. Let me go to cold drinks. Uh, where is cold drinks here? I miss cold drinks, maybe it's hidden here. Uh, let me go back to the back in here. Oh, it is hidden. See, so if I unhide uh, cold drinks, uh, I can add a picture to it and then it'll have the items inside it. So you press this gear icon here. You can go ahead and see all the items in it, right? It has lots of items. So what I can do is I can make this one first, make this one second. I can reorganize it um, and then show in different order. Uh, like Just like modifiers, you can push a specific item if you like to put it at the very top, you can do that. So let me do 20 ounce coffee first. And let me add a picture to the cold drink. I believe I may not have a perfect picture for that, but I'm gonna just choose a cold drink. This looks pretty, this looks like a cold drink here. Let's go ahead and just use that. And then what I do now is I just press insert into post. So now I have a cold drink here and I can say taste comes with this fruit. Okay, let me, somebody else is joining in. Okay, awesome. Thank you for thank you for joining in. Uh, we have 13 people uh, that's in, in this group here. So right now, as you can see, I have cold drinks here. I'm, I'm adding it. I'm adding a description to it, right? 
So right now, as you can see, cold drink is not here because it was hidden. <clears throat> I unhid it, and now I'm going to add a description to it. I'll say taste great cold. Uh, comes with a straw or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Now, when I save it, all I have to do is I go back here, and then I refresh the page, and I should see cold drinks at the very top. Yep, cold drinks. Taste great cold, comes with a straw. Right, so I can do category images, and I can also uh, reorder stuff. So I see how I put 20 ounce coffee first, and then I put the other one second, third, and then I have show more. So I can do all kinds of changes here. So that's the categories and items. So you can add your pictures, you can reorder it. Let's suppose uh, it's November and it's the cold season, and you want to push your pumpkin latte or something like that. You can actually drag that to the top, right? You can say, you know what? I don't. I want this to be at the very top. So I press reorder categories here at the very top right. See that button right here? I click on it one time, and then I go, you know what? I'm gonna push uh, on November. I'm gonna push blended drinks first because that's gonna be very popular. So you can do that. Do that also. Watch. See how I blend? I have blended drinks first here now. Now check this out. Let me make sure it's not hidden. Okay. Make sure it's on. Make sure it's not hidden. Okay. So just unhide it, and then let me add a picture to this too. So. I'm going to randomly just choose a picture. I'll choose this one here. Actually, let me choose this one. Okay, so here's blended drinks. So I chose my blended drinks, and I'm going to write a description for it. Um, enjoy the no enjoy the month of November with these blended drinks. Okay, I'm going to press save now, and then watch this. When I go back to the order online page, all I do is I press refresh, and I'm going to see blended drinks first. And I'm going to assume this is November, right? Because I'm pushing this because of November. So enjoy the month of November with these blended drinks, right? And then I have all these blended drinks in there. Remember earlier, uh, I told you I can, you can reorganize your item names. So I did that too. I can put uh, blended mocha first or second, third. Uh, you don't have to reorder it, but if you wish to push a specific item, you can do that. So, and then we have the categories on the left-hand side. Uh, and then we have, of course, the other categories here too. So let's go ahead and go to the back end again. So again, this is the front end, which is what the customers see. And this is what you as a business owner gets to see. Uh, of course, you get to see both sides, but the customer doesn't get to see this side because this is where you make the changes from. So perfect. Now let me go ahead and go to um, checkout settings. This is pretty cool right here because uh, you can do a lot with the checkout settings. Uh, you can offer pay a location, which is great because they can come inside and pay with cash or pay with credit card inside. You could do pay upon delivery. Uh, in other words, they don't have to pay right now. They pay when they arrive or when you deliver the food. Um, and then you have, of course, pay with credit card option as well. Coupons, you can enable coupons, disable coupons. So you can do like 10% off uh, coupons. Once you enable coupons, remember, once you enable this, sorry, once you enable it right here, you have to create a coupon. Uh, I noticed a lot of merchants, they will enable it and they'll never create a coupon. So you have to go over here uh, on the coupon section here right here and create a coupon, okay? So I'll show that to you in a few, a few minutes here. But let me just go down the list. Service fee, this is a really great uh, uh, section here. Service fee is great because you can actually uh, charge your customers a service fee uh, on the checkout section. So you can say, you can say online order fee, um, 2%, right? So it'll, it'll take the total of the order. Let's say the order is $100 it'll add um, $2 to it because 2% of $100 is $2. Or you can do a flat fee. You can say, every time somebody orders from my website, they have to pay me 50 cents. And, you, and that money comes straight to you. So keep that in mind, you can do that. So just kind of use different numbers. So you can do like the first month, you can do 50 cents. And if you see a decline in orders, just remove it. Um, it all depends on your location. Uh, I have some merchants, they, they were charging 50 cents per order and they saw no decline in orders. And I had one merchant, he was charging 25 cents and then he saw decline orders because it all depending on what you're selling. If you're selling coffee or for like $2 and you're charging 50 cents per order, that may not go well with the customer. But if, you, if you're selling, your average ticket is like $30, $40, uh, 50 cents, not a huge I'm number. Here. I'm on a Zoom for Zycut. Yeah, so let me see. I think somebody's phone is not on mute. Yeah. Let me see who that is. If you guys can unmute, if you guys can mute yourself, um, and, and then I will, and, and also feel free to use a chat feature to ask questions. Okay, 
So again, that's the service fee. You can do a percentage or you can do a flat amount. Both options are available to you. Tips. This is really great because you're giving your customer the option to leave you tips, right? So um, let's say you, you, you uh, uh, let me see who's not muted here. There's some, I can hear some background noise. Let me see who that is. You guys can, if you guys can check uh, on your top left of your screen, it should be like a mute button there. If it's green color, uh, press it so it turns red. Okay, so let me talk about the tip section. The tip section is really nice because uh, your customers, people are very gracious these days. They're very willing to contribute to restaurants because they know restaurants are having a difficult time. So leave that tip option open for them, um, you know? And you can also, you know, you can also uh, prefer a default tip amount. So let's say you are selling uh, sandwiches and the tip amount you want to ask for is 5%, 10%, 20%, and then 50%. I mean, it's very rare people tip 50%, but if you want to offer that option, you can. So, and that's going to ask you which one should be default, which one should be the default choice that customers see first. So I can say 20%. So by default, it will ask them to give you a 20% tip, right? Or they can change it back to these numbers. So they, they can say, you know what? Uh, I'll give them a 10% uh, tip. So they can change it themselves. But by default, it'll ask this number here, okay? So keep that in mind. You can offer default uh, tip amount and all these different tip options. Verify with SMS. Uh, the reason why we have this is because when they, pay, when they do pay a location, uh, you may get no-shows. No-shows are people that say they will come in and pay you cash inside the store, and then all of a sudden they change their mind. And then, and then now you can't get the money and you made the food right? So you don't want the food to go to waste. So it's highly recommended. Oh, great. Another person joined in. Um, so it's highly recommended that you enable verify with SMS. The reason being is because now they're held more accountable uh, to show up and, and pay, right? Because you have their cell phone number uh, saved and they have to verify their number. Again, uh, it, this varies on location to location. So some merchants have it disabled for a, quick, for, for a quicker checkout. Um, so that's entirely up to you. Um, but if you want them to, if you don't pay a location, uh, I would recommend enabling it. Um, but again, you can, you can decide, you can try for a week without enabling it and see how, see how many people uh, do not show up. And if you get a few, then you can enable it. Special instructions. This is a really good feature. Um, allow customers to leave special instructions on the checkout page. So remember the check, what's the checkout page? The checkout page is the last page. Okay. So let me, let me add something to the card here. And then I'm gonna go here. Okay, so when I go to checkout, right before I finalize my order or before I pay with my credit card or, or pay location, it's gonna ask me a very, uh, it's gonna ask me a question here. Special instructions, right? It's gonna, I can say uh, extra napkins or something or uh, ex uh, extra hot sauce, right? So, but you also want to let them know uh, what the limitations are on this, right? If you don't leave them a, like a note here, they're going to like ask for a lot of different things. And then later on when they show up and then they, you're going to have to give them a bag full of extra hot sauce and they think it's free. So you want to tell them uh, what those limitations are. So what you can write here is say, um, not all changes are possible or something like that. Additional, additional costs may apply. Okay, so what are, you, what are you doing here is you, you're giving them a, uh, an advanced notice that, yes, you can make some changes, but keep in mind that not all changes are possible, right? Like, uh, so let me actually, let me, let me save this first. If you, let me just actually save this so you can see what that means. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press save changes here. Make sure to press save changes because we get a lot of support calls um, and where people make all these changes, but they forget to press save changes. I'm not saying we get a lot, we get a few. Uh, and they forget to press save changes. So make sure to press save changes at the bottom. That way your changes go into effect. So let me go back to uh, this checkout page here. See how it doesn't have any text here? So me as a customer, I'm gonna ask for all this cool stuff, right? I'm gonna say extra hot sauce, uh, include a Red Bull with that, right? Or just, just random stuff they may write here. And they may not know that um, they have to pay for this. I'm sure they'll know they have to pay for Red Bull, but there's some customers, they may not know what the extent of your special instructions is. So you have to limit them or tell them what, how, to, how that works. I'm gonna refresh the page now. And do you recall earlier, I wrote a note there and I said that, you know, uh, we're willing to work with you with special instructions, but not all changes are possible. Like I can't say change the veggie sandwich 
to um, to impossible burger or something, right? Right. This is not possible because, but your veggie is veggie. We can't change it to impossible burger, right? So you have to let them know what the limitations are. And then if the, let's say you do have impossible burger, now they know that when they come to your front desk, you are ready to give them extra charge for the impossible burger, right? So which is probably I don't know three dollars extra. So they know. Uh, you just want to let them know ahead of time. And here's a coupon code I mentioned earlier. Once they enter the coupon code, they'll get a discount. Okay. So the coupon code is really nice to utilize uh, and post on your Facebook, Instagram, and say use coupon code you know um, food twenty five and get five percent off on your order, something like that, right? So you guys can do that uh, with your coupon codes. Let me go ahead and go to the back end again. Uh, let me go back to order types. Okay, order types is very interesting. Uh, Remember Clover? So actually, let me show you what order types comes from. It's, it comes from the back end of Clover. It's under um, order types. But that information transfers here. And these ones have a lot of order types. Um, most likely, your business will not have all these order types. So I, I did this for test purposes to give you ideas of what's possible, right? You can do curbside pickup, patio dine-in. You can do dine-in. You can do... Um, table one, you have a table and then somebody sitting at the table and then they, you have to tell them, hey, pick up the food from table one, something like that. Make a big sign at your business, a table one. So when they show up, they pick it up at table one. Uh, red table five, you know, you have a red table there so they can, when they order their food, they can know where the food is ready at red table five. Back of the house, table six, um, just different order types. And you can make new ones here, okay? You don't want to make too many of them because you don't want to make a long list of order types because they'll get confused. So, you know, just stick with the stick with what you need for your online customers. And then the green indicates that this is visible to your online customers. This is not visible to your online customers. This is only visible to your in-store customers, okay? So keep that in mind as you make your order types, okay? And of course, when you press edit, you can say, let's say they do a, let me actually do this one. Let's say they do, let's say you have a order type for um, table 12 sushi counter. But for this specific order type, you don't want to take coupons. So you can disable the coupons for this one. And let's say table 12 sushi counter it is uh, people have to first come first serve, right? There's no, they can't schedule their orders. So you can disable this too, right? So they can't schedule like, like two days in advance or, or an hour in advance. They have to show up and uh, first come first serve, whatever. You can do, you can prevent them from scheduling their orders, okay? So, and then you can do a minimum amount for this order. Let's say the sushi counter requires a $50 minimum order. You can actually do that, but you can say a maximum. Let's say you don't, wanna, you don't want somebody to order more than $200 because you can only make certain, certain amount of food or certain amount of cash. I mean, you only wanna take certain amount of money per table. You can do that too. And you can say, is it taxable? And you can also tell the system, uh, are you willing to deliver this, uh, this order type? You can say yes or no. So your customers can say, you know what? I want to order this order type and have it delivered to my house so that you can, you can say yes or no. And then you can choose which hours this order type is available. You can say it's available custom hours or certain uh, Clover business hours. So remember, Clover business hours is very important for you to do your business hours on Clover because that information is uh, based on which hours they can choose uh, on your website. So make sure to always have your business hours set up on Clover. Okay, so that's order types. Um, let me go to import sync inventory. I, I kind of uh, went over it very quickly earlier uh, where how these things correspond to your Clover inventory, but I did not mention how it, is, how it syncs. So we have a feature called item sync, right? Right here, item sync. So if you enable this, your item sync will do it in real time. Uh, so if you change the price of a fish sandwich from five bucks to $6, it will update in real time on the order online page. But if you change your modifier price or name or anything like that, then you just have to press update modifiers, right? Just press this button one time and it's done. This one will do automatically for you. This one you have to do it manually. Uh, but soon, um, if once Clover releases option to do I to modify auto sync, we'll also have that for you as well. But for now, uh, item auto sync is available for you. Uh, to do that. And most people actually change their items prices anyway. So it's rare that somebody change their taxes. Usually taxes are changed like once a year, but if you do change your taxes once a year, then you have to come in and press update taxes. 
Okay. And uh, I had one merchant, he deleted his tax and then he added again and deleted it and he added again. If you if you happen to do that, please clean up your taxes. So press clean inventory, go to next, next. Oh, sorry, let me do that again. Go right here and then press uh, clean the taxes. Clean just means remove the old tax rates. So I have two tax rates cleaned and then you, and then you can just press cancel. So you have to wait for the word clean. So it just let me just recap this one more time. Let's say you are trying to clean up your categories on your Clover POS. You removed five categories and then you go on your website and there's still those five categories there. And you're wondering, how can I remove these categories instead of hiding it? Just do clean category. I press start. And remember, wait till this goes all the, all the way to the end. Okay. Don't press cancel or next yet. Just keep, keep waiting here. Okay. Because if you have a lot of categories, this can take some time. Okay. So I have 22 categories cleaned and I could press next. Now I can clean my items. So items usually takes a long time. It can take up to five minutes, uh, depending on how many items you have. I had one merchant, they had 8,000, I believe, or 10,000 items. So that one took about 10 minutes to do this uh, uh, cleaning. But if you only have like 100, it'll be much quicker. So you may not always have to do that, but if you do have, but let's say you're doing house cleaning once a year, and then you remove 500 items from your inventory, come here and do a clean inventory. That way, all those 500 items that you no longer wish to serve to your customers can be removed from your Clover inventory. Hello? Yes, hello? Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead. Uh, from, we, from where? Which business? Right. Sorry. Were you, sorry, I didn't hear you. What did you yeah, say? I thought we were going Zoom, so it's not a Zoom. I mean, on a Zoom, so it's not Zoom. You, you, you are on Zoom, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, your question is, if you're on Zoom right now? Okay, I didn't quite understand your question, but anyhow, um, let me know, because uh, your audio was a little bit, I couldn't hear you clearly. So this item uh, inventory clean sync. So it's gonna clean the inventory. See, as you can see, it'll take some time, but I'm not gonna do this right now because the video will be very long. I don't wanna, I wanna show you guys, uh, I don't wanna take too much of your time either. So I'm gonna press cancel for now. But if you guys to clean your inventory, just press, uh, you know, and just wait for it to finish. You can go ahead and have a cup of coffee and come back and it'll be done. Okay. Uh, so again, uh, depending on how many items you have, as you can see taxes is, I mean, the people only have like one tax rate. So this would be like super quick. Look how fast taxes is done. Taxes updated, right? Let me do a clean the taxes again. See, this one's super fast because most people only have like one or two taxes. But items, they have a lot of items. They also have a lot of modifiers too. All right, so that's clean the sink for you guys. Let me go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, I think I went, yeah, I went through store. Oh, actually, I haven't gone through store settings. Okay, so um, store settings has a lot of features for you. So remember, you can get emails when an online order is placed. You can get up to five people here uh, to get emails for the online orders. And then you can also get a text message too, if you have the texting plan. And track stock. Track stock is nice uh, because if you are tracking stock, it will automatically deduct inventory count in real time from your inventory. Alternate names. Uh, I think I mentioned this to you guys. Let me see if I can uh, go back over there and show it to you again. Okay, so, um, okay, so Clover has something called alternate names. Let me go to items here. Okay, let me go to Albacore uh, sandwich here. So um, where's alternate names? Let me move this out of the way. Um, okay, let's see. Because remember, Clover changes a lot. I mean, uh, the last six months, I've seen this change so many times. So item cost, item tracking. Okay, let me see where the alternate names is at. Let me move this out of the way. Uh, fixed price, shown POS. Okay, it must be a different uh, interface, I believe, but they have something called alternate names here. It, alternate names is like for your in-house. Let's say you don't wanna call this Albacore sandwich. You wanna call it AS because everybody knows what AS means. So you can do an alternate name for it. So it will show that, but it's not recommended to do that because even though you know it's called AS, your customers don't know what that is on the website. So alternate names should only be used if, it, if it's pretty close to the original name, original name, unless you are only showing it for your in-store customers, or sorry, your in-store uh, employees, then you can do that. Okay, so that's what alternate names is. Uh, let me go ahead and go back to here again. Um, okay, so if you are open 24 hours a day, do this, but it's very rare restaurants are open 24, 24 hours a day. 
So make sure to use Clover business hours, okay? And it'll tell you how to do that. You go on your clover.com dashboard and then you manage your business hours there, okay? Remember, it's called business operations. So do it from the right location. Okay, if you're, what happens when you're closed? Do you want people to see your menu? If you do, um, then if you do, then leave this the way it is. If you don't, then turn this on. Your menu will disappear after you're closed. But I recommend not, I recommend leaving it like this. This way people can see your menu. So when you do open, they already have in their minds what to order. Okay, when the store is closed, uh, allow customers to schedule their orders in advance. Let's say you, you open at 8 a.m. and then a customer goes to your website at six o'clock, he orders. Um, you want them him to order at six o'clock in the morning, schedule their orders. I would recommend it to do so because he's not gonna come at 6.30, he's gonna come when you open. So the earliest he can choose, it will be 8 a.m., right? So this is a good idea to leave that open. Um, and then you can also, let's say, let's say when you are closed, instead of saying online order closed, you can say, uh, thank you for visiting us um, during, off, during closing hours. Uh, we will open again at 6 a.m., right? You can write a custom message. So when you close, it'll, it'll show the customers this message. If you don't have a custom message here, it'll, it'll use a default message, which will just say online ordering current, currently closed. We are open from this and that hour. So you can write a nice message here. And then um, you can do a custom store announcement, and then you can do uh, you can show this message during checkout, and then you can have them schedule their orders and do all these things. Okay, so I want to. I don't want to keep talking because uh, I know a lot of you've been patiently listening. I want to ask you guys for questions so I can answer that. I and I'm gonna. I should go to the taxi here. Um, okay. Let me. I'm looking through the questions here. Are you comp are you compatible with Square as well? I'm almost ready to launch my website. And I don't think Clover has updated my debit account for apps, and it's been two years. So I may be switching soon. I don't think Clover has updated my debit account for apps. Okay. So I see Angelique asked a good question. Uh, I'll have somebody reach out to you, Angelique. We don't work with Square, but we'll see how. Uh, we'll, I know Clover has a, a one issue with the billing. Uh, they are going to fix that. Maybe that's what you're referring to. Um, and it hasn't been you know, taken out for two years. So I'll have somebody message you here. Um, Chris, if somebody from here can message Angelique, um, and then we can uh, get on a call with her afterwards to help solve that problem. So the other question is, does a tax adjust if you accept EBT? Uh, remember, this is for rest uh, for, uh, does a tax adjust if you accept EBT? Or you, are you saying that, are you saying that um, if you have an order type uh, and people are paying with EBT, uh, if, if you cannot do taxes on there? Yeah, of course. So for example, if you go on the order type here, let's say you have, a, you have one here called, um, you can say EBT pickup inside the store or something like that. Okay, EBT pickup. And then what you can do is you can say taxable, no. So they can come inside. Remember, you can't accept EBT online. Clover doesn't have an EBT integration for online. So you can say EBT pay upon pickup, right? Oh, wait, sorry. Actually, let me do this way. Pay with EBT upon pickup. So, so basically what you're telling the customer is, yes, you are willing to accept EBT upon pickup, okay? So what, they, what happens at checkout is they just order your food is sent to their, the food is order sent to their Clover. And then, and then, um, and then you could take their EBT card and do the payment. Okay. Remember once they come to your business, you could take whatever payment you, you could, you want, you can take EBT, you can take check, you can take um, gift cards, whatever you want to do inside the store, it's up to you. But online there's the payment options are credit card, all the major credit cards. And then of course, of course, uh, which is the other one, pay a location, which is what they do when they show up. So non-taxable, and then they'll come to you. Uh, and you can also actually do a delivery order. So you can say, pay upon pickup or delivery, pay with EBT upon pickup or delivery. Uh, you have to, if you're doing EBT upon delivery, you have to have your, uh, uh, like a, a mobile device with you. So you can go there and take the EBT payment. Okay. So but other than that, I would just do uh, no delivery for that. Okay. Let me see what else do we have here. Unfortunately, tax rates do not adjust. Oh, okay. I think, okay. I see somebody responded to the question if tax rates adjust. Uh, so I'm not sure what the word adjust means, if you could clarify that question. But if you're saying that if you can add or not add taxes to order type, 
yes, that kind of adjustment is possible. But if you're trying to say um, taxes to rent to apply different tax amounts, um, you know, that one, it has to come through your Clover. Your Clover uh, uh, sets the tax rates, okay? So that's where the taxes come from. And let me see, go ahead, please ask, keep asking the great questions here. I, 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 I have two so far. And if, while you guys are writing your questions, I'm gonna talk about some other cool features uh, that we, we have, which is the, um, the branded app. This is a really great uh, opportunity for everybody on the call to learn about our branded app because the branded app is gonna take your business to the next level a lot of merchants call and, and when I tell them about the branded app, they usually don't understand uh, all the benefits because they think it's just an app where they order from the phone. Well, the main difference between this and ordering from your phone is this is found in the app store, right? So people go to the iOS app store or the Google Play and they download your app, your app with your business name, with your logo, with your food menu, right? So, so here's how it typically works when people download other apps. They go through the app market they download Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats, and they find you within that app and they order from your business. But the next time they come back to order, what happens is Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats, all these other platforms, they're not going to show your app or your business again. They will show somebody else's business, right? They, they're, they're not really pushing you all the time. So with your own app, People open your app, they see your menu again and again and again. And it's your menu, you can customize it. It goes to the Clover, everything syncs uh, with the Clover, the items sync with the Clover. So that's the benefit of having your own app. You can do all of these things with it and it's really cost-effective. It'll help you uh, long-term. I highly recommend you check out our website uh, to learn more about this because the branded app is a real great benefit. The world is moving towards digital. People are looking for these things. Uh, people are looking for ways to, um, the millennials, they're, they're downloading apps all the time now. So if you have your app on the app store, they will look, find it. They will tell their friends about it. They'll download it just like this one here and they will order from the app, right? It'll, it'll be on Google Play or App Store. Keep that in mind. And also we offer social media marketing too. So if you ever do get the branded app and if, you want, if you're wondering, okay, I have the branded app now, how do I tell my customers about my branded app? Well, we, we're going to help you with that. We're going to put give you a QR code and you can put the QR code inside your business. You can also ship the QR codes. I mean, sorry, not ship it. You can um, post it on your website. We can actually do that for you too. Just put the, put not the QR code, but this, this logo here. We can put this on your website and it will give you the QR codes where you can put it inside your business. They scan it and it downloads the app for them. So that's a huge uh, benefit um, for, for that. But if you want to take it one step further and you want to do our social media marketing, this is where we promote your app, we promote your website, we promote your online ordering. We do all that for you from, in, uh, from in-house. We have experts here that does that. And if you wanna learn more about this, give us a call right here, or you can schedule a free meeting, or you can read our case study. Uh, again, we have a case study. Uh, we also have YouTube videos too. So remember uh, on, on, on YouTube, we have lots of videos on how to print, how to sync, uh, best practices on how to change prices, lots and lots of videos so there's wealth of information and if you want to find our youtube video links just click right here see where it says video tutorials click on this it'll take you to the youtube page and you can learn all about our different uh features and functions um you know just learn a little bit at a time you don't have to learn everything at once just learn maybe the app first or the printing second take your time because that way you we, we, we're here to grow with your business okay so you want to you can you can learn uh, the features as time goes by and then we have frequently asked questions and then we have delivery areas. Remember, you can add your own delivery zones. If you are delivering, you can say, you can say I will only uh, deliver to this area, but not this area because this area has a lot of traffic, right? So you can avoid certain places where there's a lot of traffic uh, or you can charge more for here, right? So let's say you want to deliver here, but it takes you 30 minutes to get here, but only takes you five minutes to get here. So you can charge a $2 delivery here and charge a $10 delivery here, right? Because uh, people will know that you know that uh, that delivery is based on how much time it takes and your effort and all that so they'll understand um so based on traffic or you can or you can just not deliver there or you can just do a, a estimate you can do a, i mean you can do like a five dollar delivery fee for everybody so it's, that's up to you because i had one merchant uh his location uh, he was right here and next to him was a lake right here a huge lake 
and then customer order from here. So he had to drive all the way around the lake to de deliver the food. Um, so he had to charge extra for them, even though it was, it was the same distance going this way, he would charge less here, but more here because he had to drive all the way around the lake. So anyhow, you guys can uh, you know, charge different fees for that. Or you can do a fixed delivery fee, which is a flat delivery fee for everybody. Or you can say, you know what, if everybody is ordering from outside my delivery zone, I want an extra $5 or charge $10. You can do that too. Um, so, and then, and then if you, let's say uh, you, you are delivering and then somebody orders from this area and then, and then you can tell them a message, say, sorry, uh, currently we do not deliver to that area. Um, please check back later or please call the store for exceptions or something like that, right? You can, they can see a message so they know why they can't order for you for, for delivery because you're telling them up ahead in, uh, ahead of time, what's the reason? So they'll appreciate that, that you, they know why they can't, unless rather than just saying, sorry, we don't deliver to you or that place, you can give them a good explanation. Like we don't deliver at that area. We deliver within 10 mile radius or something like that. Okay, that's, that's the delivery areas. And then we have custom hours. This is gonna be a whole new video. Uh, maybe I'll do a new webinar for this one. It'll still take time to learn this one as well. In other words, just to give you a brief idea, you can do custom hours for categories and custom hours for order types. So you can say um, dinner is only available from 12 to eight and then hot drinks only available from two to four, something like that. So that could be, a, that you can learn about that by watching the video here. There's a video on custom hours here on, on, on our YouTube channel. You can find that as well. Um, so I don't want to keep talking. Does anybody have any questions so far? Uh, anybody have any questions? If not, I'll, I'll continue and, and kind of wrap it up in a few minutes here. So I think I went over a lot of different information. Uh, hopefully I did not overwhelm anybody here with too much information. Um, so feel free uh, to watch this video again later. It's being recorded. So this way you guys can come back and watch it again if you kind of missed something or didn't understand something. Um, but let me, let me actually play a video for you guys while I'm here. If life were like women, right? And things just stopped working. I believe this is the video for the branded app. Okay, this is a different video. Let me actually get to the, the branded app video. So I'm going to go to this section here. So anyhow, the branded app video is right here. You guys can watch it yourselves um, to learn more about it. Just go on our YouTube channel and click for the branded app video. Or you can go to our website and you can find it there as well. So our website also has the branded app video. Um, okay, so keep that in mind. Let me see if I have any other links so you guys can quickly learn more. Okay, so here's, here's our social media link here. Uh, let me actually go to the right one. Okay, so here's, this, uh, here's our main website here. You can uh, look for social media marketing here. Again, it's called Z-A-Y-T-E-C-H.com. You can sign up for our social media, uh, learn more about us, uh, sign up for the Build Me a Branded app, uh, make, make a meeting. So we have many ways of, for you guys to get a hold of. We work with your schedule. So make sure that you, know, you can choose whatever time is good for you to learn more. Uh, and then we can get that branded app built for you. So you can be published in the Clover app. I mean, sorry, you can publish in the iOS app store and in the Google Play. And currently, at, uh, as of today's video, as of uh, August 23rd, 2021, uh, we're looking at about seven to 10 business days to build you your own branded app, okay? So we can do that too. And also feel free to check out our, check out our summer special. We have different specials coming along. Uh, remember, uh, this video will be posted on YouTube, so I don't wanna, uh, this special may change. We have new specials coming up, but check out our website often so you can see our latest specials or call us for our specials because we have different, um, we'll have different specials coming uh, all the time. But again, here's our branded app. Uh, we have many different apps, but the one I was focusing on today was these three things here, okay? And uh, let's go ahead and kind of wrap this up. Uh, let me see if I can give you the contact information. Because uh, the way I'm looking at this video is I'm seeing people watching it now on Zoom and also people watching on YouTube. So I have to kind of uh, make sure they people on YouTube also when they see in the future they know how to get a hold of us. So here's our phone number right here. You can call us, uh, you know, during our business hours or send an email out here too. Uh, and we have documentation here. Uh, we have lots of information for you guys to learn more about us. And you can also get to know us too by looking at our, at our team about us, right? You can learn more about us, and you can look look at our reviews on Google. 
Uh, we're always trying to help impress the merchants, business owners, give a great customer service experience. So we're all about experience. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, what I want to talk about in this video. Hopefully I went over everything. If I missed something, feel free to call us or email us. And uh, let me go ahead and open up the question and answer session here. So if anybody have questions, uh, please ask. For those of you watching on YouTube later, uh, please call us or email us with your questions. Uh, but anybody here have any questions, please do ask. Okay, I see no questions being asked. I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume everybody uh, pretty got some value, value out, out of this video. Um, and if you did, please uh, come back to our YouTube channel and give a thumbs up. Uh, that way we can do more of these videos, right? Because we want to keep doing more videos. And you guys are the ones that are um, you know, showing up to let us know if these videos are helpful or not. So, uh, so we need your feedback. Uh, so we can do more of these videos and and then comment or email us and let us know what's the next video we should do okay uh, we have our email here and just say hey can, on the next video can you talk about this or can you talk about that or just tell us we, and we can make another webinar um, with and answer those questions all right um, so it looks like uh, there is no questions i'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up thank you everybody for joining really appreciate that and please uh, check out our emails at, uh, for our next email for the next webinar and please join um, and we can go talk about some other features that we have planned or other uh, workshops that we have planned. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Thank you.